what it is, what it is, guys. So today, man, we sit with a Memphis bro, like somebody that's we're very well known in the hip hop industry in Memphis, like one of the pioneers. We see when my guy Al Capone. What's up, Al Capone? Man? What's up, man? What's What's going up, down man? with your play boy? Yes, sir. Oh so, boy. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, like, uh, before we get deep into this interview, tell us a little bit about where you coming from, how it was for you growing up in Memphis. Oh uh, man, uh, you no, know, growing up, growing up in Memphis is, I mean, everybody know how it is in Memphis, man. Uh, you know, saying you gotta know how to, you know. Uh, do what you got to do to get what you got to get and mm -hmm. stay out the way. And, you know what I'm saying? It, it was fun, though, to be honest with you. It was mm -hmm. actually fun, just, uh, you know, everyday life uh, coming up. I grew up in um, the hood of South Memphis, which is uh, in the Wicks and Mississippi area as mm -hmm. a kid. And then as a teenager, I was in the Lamar Terrace Projects. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Project life, you know, it, it's, it's actually it's a lot of fun. I, mm -hmm. I, am more, I remember more fun than anything, to be honest with you. Yeah, and th yeah, bro, this this typical stuff, like, you know. <laughs> but how did you how did you transform, like, coming from the hood? You know, I'm pretty sure you saw some things that you, oh, definitely. Should, you should never saw. You know, so how did you turn it into, like, how did you turn it into you becoming this big artist that you is and, like, turn it Man, into I'm, I'm a, to, be, to be honest, everybody know that I always loved hip hop, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, from from elementary. Uh, so about it, so I was always rapping. I was always doing some form of DJing, or, you know what I'm saying, just just a part of the hip hop culture. So even though uh, I'm in the hood, everybody in the hood knew me as somebody that was like the, the guy that knew all about rap music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No matter what rap came out, they knew I knew it. And if they didn't know it, I'm walking around blasting it and putting them up on whatever the new stuff is. So. Uh, I'm saying that to say that even though I saw a lot of stuff in and on some levels, I was actually out there in the in it in the midst of it too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I always uh, loved hip hop, so uh, you know it just hip hop actually got got me out of the streets. Yeah, hip hop is what um, uh, I knew I had something more to look forward to than you know the streets. And let me see, I'm, I'm throw that, I got to be 100 about this yes. too. I was actually smart in school, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What school, <laughs> oh, what high school did you go to? This, this Central High School, man. Mm -hmm. I was actually smart in school, man. Um, mm -hmm. So so I used to make good grades and everything, but you know, you know, uh, the street life, you you just want to, you know, see what's going on, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying, you know, your homies, they, they into it, so you kind of get caught up in it a little bit, but mm -hmm. I had enough uh, love for hip hop, and I, you know what I'm saying, I had, I feel like I had a good upbringing with my mom, where mm -hmm. she, she put me up on enough game, whereas it, it's just came to a point where it's like, if I stay moving in the street life direction, I knew where I was headed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I had, I've been a juvenile and everything, so I knew where I was going if I stayed there. And it was like, man, it's it's another way to, you know what I'm saying? It's a better way of life. And I'm gonna ask you this: What was that one incident? If you can recall that one incident, be like, I'm done with this street life. This ain't for me. Ooh, uh. Probably down there getting killed out there trying to sell, <laughs> trying to sell drugs. <laughs> to yeah. be honest with you, that uh, almost get killed. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Either I'm gonna. Um, it really got as you know what I'm saying. I don't know. If we supposed to be getting this raw, mm -hmm. yeah. but it got this. It got it, this real. Whereas, you know, uh, it was almost it was basically kill or be killed. To be honest mm -hmm. with you, it, it was getting to that point. Whereas, if I would have stayed. In that life, you know what I'm saying? I was about to, it was gonna be kill or be killed. Simple yeah. as that. Either I was gonna get killed or I'm gonna have to kill somebody. And at that point, it was like, man, it's more to life than this. Mm -hmm. That's when I knew, I'm like, man, it's more to life than this. And I actually got other things that I could do that, 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 that I don't have to do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here because. The environment I'm in, and you know, what I'm saying it's a way to hustle. And mama raised you good, like you know. Mom yeah. raised me way better than that, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, um, you know, it just that realization hit me, like man, you know what? Ain't like I'm, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm good in school, and you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying I love hip hop. I don't have to live this life. I don't have to be out here, you know, what I'm saying to the point where I'm at this crossroads where it's some real killer be killed mm -hmm. about to happen. And you know, saying and, and and moms found out a little bit about it. She was ready to put me out there. <laughs> it was a lot going on right yeah, at the yeah, same yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was like, man, it's got to be a better way. Uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. I, I chose, you know, I chose to go the hip hop way and mm -hmm. and shoot, man. Before I know it, I started building up a name. Yeah. So when you graduated from Central High School, what was that role like? After high school, you know, did you did you just I, did I, everybody know? Oh, this Al Capone. It nah, took nah, a nah, little nah, minute. Nah, nah, nah. Actually, 
uh, like I said, I was always rapping and everything. So I was, I knew all the place, places to go. It wasn't that many places anyway. I knew all the places to go where where rappers would go and hang out and DJs. So I used to be in them spots anyway before the Memphis rap scene had started developing. And um, so I, I had a name with those people. So by the time, and this is during high school. Mm. So by the time I got out of high school, man, I, I promise you it was like a year later, um, we used to perform at this club that was downtown on Bill Street. It was called Studio G at the time, 380 Bill. They tore it down now. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us came up in there, like uh, A-Ball and MJG, myself, um, Gangsta Patty. I mean, the list goes on and on. DJ Squeaky, mm -hmm. he was the, one of the DJs there. So uh, Squeaky actually used to play one of my songs there. Uh, it was called Lyrical Drive-By. And I used to perform there a lot. Mm -hmm. And I used to be the type of performer that I had long hair at the time. And yeah. I used to go on stage and just, I used to rap like I was a rock rock and roll dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I stood out from everybody. That was the first thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I was the only one doing it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Jumping off of tables and spinning in the air and coming down yeah. rapping. I'm like, man, they, I'm going to make sure you they remember shy, me. Bro, like you weren't shy, like you know man, so much. I was we... ready to eat the stage <laughs> up. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, I started building my name up from performing. And then this song uh, I did, uh, Squeaky, started playing it in the clubs. And I say to uh, about three to four months later, he called. He said, "Man, you got to come to this club. Whenever I play your song, man, they go crazy." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when I went and I saw, I like, oh, man, I couldn't believe it. Like, wow. Yeah. So Squeaky did his first mixtape. That was the very first mixtape he ever put out. And he was like, "Man, let me put that song on the, on my mixtape." Man, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Man, before I know it, uh, once he, that mixtape came out. I used to go like to the mall and stuff like that, and I used to hear a car ride past playing my song. I'm like, whoa, what the yeah. hell going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I became Scarface Al Capone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I actually became a rapper in the city at that mm. point. So that's yeah. how I that's how it went. Yeah, and no matter you this. What was their first? Do you remember making your first song ever? Like, what was the name of their first song? Ever? How long did it take for you I, to make I, hold that song? On, I'm gonna tell you. Hold on. Yeah. Hey, get this. Get, hold, on, hold on. So the first song I ever did was in the sixth grade, and I was in this group. We called ourselves the Pee Wee MCs. <laughs> <laughs> the Pee Wee MCs. <laughs> we was a little Pee Wee little dude, sixth yeah. grade. <laughs> we were called the Pee Wee MCs, and uh, uh, I don't remember what we rapped about, but. It was also just though I'm a I'm a I'm a hard rapper type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But with the Pee Wee MCs, it was my first group and first rap I ever wrote. Um, actually, I had somebody to help me rap it, or uh, uh, write it, because I wasn't that good of a writer mm -hmm. at the time. But I, uh, um, after that, I learned how to write. But that was that was the very first one. Pee Wee MCs. It probably was called the Pee Wee MCs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So this 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 very great to hear about, man. So. Tell us a little bit about this. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kind of switch that off this subject. Well, when was that moment that you realized like I created this in Memphis? People like you know, cause I know you created a lot of things. When was that moment that you realized like okay, I I set this trend. Like I know for sure this me. My for the Memphis rap sound, I never uh, take credit as you know. I take credit as being one of the people. Uh, uh, I, I I I can never say uh, I created anything on my own. I was one of the people that, you know, that uh, helped lay that foundation down in them early days, but I definitely was one of them. Um, one of the things I could say I created um, that nobody was doing then and anybody um, during that era could, could, would, would vouch for me 100%. I, was, uh, I just spoke on it. I was one of the first rappers to go on stage and, and perform like a rocker. Mm -hmm. Everybody else used to, just, they used to rap, you know what I'm saying, walk around and rapping and everything, but I was the first one like I said, jumping off tables and spinning around and throwing my hair going like crazy, like nuts. Mm -hmm. So I was the first one doing that in Memphis. I can't speak for nowhere else, but in Memphis, in this area, in the surrounding areas, I was the first, I, I can say, rock rapper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was that, for sure. Yeah. And man... Me being with me being twenty years old, my birthday actually today. My but, happy birthday, man. Appreciate you, appreciate yeah, you, yes sir. Yeah, with yeah. me being twenty years old, man, you know, I look back on the rap scene back in the nineties and now, bro, it changed a whole lot. And why do you feel like that is? Because at first Memphis used to be on some crunk stuff. Yep, yep. Now we all on some ready to kill and ready. Why do you feel like that is though? With well, you being an OG in, in this. To be honest with you, it was um um a lot of that came with it's it it started out more um um wanting to make songs to make 
uh, the audience gangster walk. Mm -hmm. uh, before juking, it was gangster walking, and it was about folks coming to the club. They do do the gangster walk in the circle and, and everything. Uh, so we used to try to make the songs to make them do that. So it was about uh, getting the people crunk and getting the people buck. You know, they used and, and again they 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 do the gangster walk, mm -hmm. chant get buck, get like the whole crowd like going in a, in a circle. So we wanted to make songs for that. I say when the mixtape scene started to pop off, it started switching more to, you know, talking more. We talked about the streets, but it got really deeper into talking about the streets. And that's when songs like Lock Em In The Trunk uh, was like, the you know, became popular. And, and a lot of the, like when you say it's, it's a lot of uh, street stuff going on now, it actually was going on then too, in the mixtape days. It got real. It was. It was. I think they more. I think they more verbal now. Like they, what they say in them songs sometimes they still be facts and like now, they, now, they now, more now, verbal. Okay, so so the difference is, uh, 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 like I said, uh, the street stuff, the street element was always because Memphis, Memphis is a street city. So the street element was always there. The the fuzz, the subject matter, and everything. I say what happened. What's going on now is, it's more of, folk, everybody feel like they gotta prove, they self to the point where they, if I'm talking about it, I really got to be out here, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, showing and proving, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just think it's more of that. Uh, again, some of that was going on then, but it's like magnified now, whereas it's, it's, it's almost mm -hmm. like a way, I don't even, I, I can't fully understand it enough to explain mm -hmm. it, but it's definitely a, a lot more of uh, trying to prove that you are that. Mm -hmm. you know and do you feel like they could prevent, because I talk to a lot of young rappers too, do you feel like they could prevent a lot of young rappers from getting into the uh, into the rap industry, or do you feel like they'll let them in, but it's going to be so far they can go? I feel like this, and this is, I always feel like this about Memphis in general, I wish, and I'm hoping that it'll get to more of this, like the street element of Memphis is just one part of Memphis. Everybody, in, even in the hood, like some people feel like the hood is all about shoot 'em up, bang bang. Man, come on, man. We live in if if you live in the hood, man, your mama lived there, your grandma lived there, you know what I'm saying? Folk going to work, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, getting on the bus, going to work. Everybody ain't not shooting and killing and yeah. selling drugs. Yeah. So I'm saying that to say that, you know, um, um it's other elements that could be represented from the hood that ain't necessarily gotta be repping, you know what I'm saying, shooting, killing and selling drugs. It's other things that go on in the hood. Outside of that, you know what I'm saying? You got folks that know how to dance, you know what I'm saying? It's all kinds of folks go to church, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I'm saying? It ain't just that. Man, so I, I know a young dude that's from the hood. He not a, he, man, he not a work on software and computers, See stuff what like I'm that. Saying? Yeah. It's, it's so many different elements of, of, um, in the hood that, that, that don't get represented. And I just feel like that's what's, the, I wish Memphis would get more of representing the whole it's there. The street element is there, so we can't act like it ain't there. And it's going, you know, I, I feel like you got to show that part because it, it's a reality. But we got to show the other parts, too. And I feel like if we show the other sides of the hood and uh, the different things that people do in the hood that ain't got nothing to do with the street life, mm -hmm. I think it would encourage more people to say, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you see it more. Mm -hmm. If you see more people... Uh, uh, Working on computers, or you see more people, um, you know, making it as choreographers and you know, whatever the different ways, the different things that go on. If you see more people doing it at the hood. I think other folks in the hood will feel more encouraged to do it mm -hmm. if they see other people doing it. But if mm -hmm. all you, if the only thing you see that's making it out the hood is folks talking about shooting, killing, and, and selling the drugs, you think you got to go that route because you think that's the only way out. Mm -hmm. You think that's the way. Besides, you know, sports or whatever the case yeah. may be, you think that's the only way, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. I just feel like we yeah. got to show other parts. Yeah, of and I'm gonna ask you this: on. like, with you being from South Memphis, which is the hood, have you ever do you have you ever went back to your community and tried to like talk to some young dudes or my or, motiv or motivate? And, and you probably do it now. You know, it's just probably not people not aware of it. You know, yeah, yeah. So you know, like, how often do you go back to your hood and try to talk to the youngins and like get them game? Well, I, well, Lamar Terrace ain't there no more, so. Uh, but we do have these uh, Lamartiers, uh picnics every year, almost like um, uh, high school reunions and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, I try to make sure I show up there, and and then my other hood, I try to show up there. So, but outside of just the hood part, uh, 
any just young black person from any hood, um, I try to make sure that I can, if they, especially if they're receptive, I'm, I'm more than happy to give game. Mm -hmm. I used to go to juvenile court to talk to the, the guys in juvenile court about mm -hmm. some of the stuff we talking about. Just open your mind and know that it's more out here. And it's, it's, even though it seems like this is this all it is uh, to survive, it's other ways to survive. And, you know, uh, so outside of just my hood, I feel like Memphis is my hood in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I try to talk to any, you know what I'm saying, go to schools and talk to uh, the uh, students at schools. Uh, like I said, if it could be somebody that, that'll come up to me and just want to uh, ask me a few questions, I'm more than happy to, you know what I'm saying, offer any kind of advice and, you know, uh, just try to let them, at the end of the day, it's like, man, there's other ways we could do this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? There's other ways to go about it. There's certain rappers I know, young rappers, again, I want to, only want to talk about shooting more bang bang. I'm like, man, man you I know you can talk about they, this and that too, right? It's there because they, it's, they this was sell. And you know, this was, this was sell. But, but, it, that ain't the, but that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It does sell, mm -hmm. but that ain't the only thing that sell. Mm -hmm. It's just... It seemed like that's 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 the most popular thing that sell. It's other stuff that sell too. Mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't get the bad news is always gonna be uh, uh, get more more uh, hype than good. Yeah, news. yeah, yeah. This facts. I learned that by me blogging, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's nice. all so the good news is down, mm -hmm. and it's actually people that like that good news. It's just the bad news get more popular. Think about it when you're in school in, in class. Uh, uh, the class clown gonna get more attention than the person that's doing the right thing in this class. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So they don't want to get closer with the teacher, grow their bud. Yeah. yeah. So you know what I'm saying? So and then you know they they a lot of times you know they they be more popular, whatever the case may be. So think about everybody else in the class. If you looking for you know you want to be popular too, you want to be cool. You start looking at oh, well, I got to be more like the class clown than mm -hmm. the person that's actually you know got their head in the books. And uh, um, you know, looking to advance, so I'm saying, but that don't mean the person that's got their heads in the books ain't finna be successful. Yeah, you just looking at the person that's getting the most popularity and the most clout, but that other person that's more quiet and just you know, going the right way, they they actually about to be more popular, you know, financially for sure. Okay, let me take that back. The popularity might not be there on that level, but financially they probably gonna end up being more stable mm -hmm. in the long run. Mm -hmm. That fast. Popularity and clout could get you caught up quicker too, mm -hmm. but nobody want to talk about that or mm -hmm. think about that because yeah. we they, most people looking for popularity and clout and you just want to be seen. Yeah, but I, I, I'm gonna say this though, nothing ain't wrong with it. It's it's how you want to do it. You know, I feel like it's how you want to use it. Okay, and you know, so sometimes like a lot of people they want to be famous just for they can flex on people. No, bro, you want to be famous to influence people. That's why I do that because I want to influence people. You there know, you and they're just gonna come with it. You know, and I feel like a lot of young dudes, like, everybody want to be a rapper now because the truth, you can make some money in You music, can make bro. some money. Yeah. You can make some money if you become one of those people that, that get connected to make money. But the truth be told, you see about the, you hear about the people that's making money. Um, but I just say if it's like this, out of a thousand people, 50 people might make money. Like, actually pocket they're money. actually making money. Now, if fifty people ain't they ain't doing nothing. I mean, they, they ain't that they ain't good, but they not making money like that. But the the fifty people that's making money, it make it seem like everybody gonna make money doing it, like mm -hmm. doing that. But the other other nine hundred fifty people, you don't see them, mm -hmm. you don't hear about them, so you don't you don't look at the odds. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I'm actually, if you able to look at the odds, you'll be like, oh, 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 hold on. The truth of the matter is, yeah, you know so what I'm saying. You feel like in a, in a way, the hip hop industry, they play on young people sometimes. Like, or or them people, they let that. I wouldn't say hip hop play on them. It's like they they see that and they be like, oh, I can get that. It ain't, but it's not. It's deeper than what they think. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You hit it right on the head. It, it, this, like I said, the people that that actually is uh, making money and more and popular and everything. They they the ones in everybody's face. Mm -hmm. The ones that ain't doing nothing or, or having a hard time. You don't see or hear you don't see or hear them, so you don't know that it's actually way more people that ain't doing good than than people that is doing good. So mm -hmm. you only looking at the people that's doing good. So you thinking, okay, uh, I should do that because I feel like I'm just as good as that person. So 
You know what I'm saying? I should be able to make the money that they making, but that ain't no that honestly that's not a reality when you look at the uh when you actually look at the numbers. Yeah. So how long did it take for you not to get in your business? No, no. How long doing. did it take for you to actually make like some real bread? Like, bro, I'm making this like this me. Uh, I know in, in the beginning I was making some uh, pretty good show money. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm going to say Hustle and Flow type days, right? Right mm-hmm. around Hustle and Flow. When I'm Hustle and Flow, Hustle and Flow came up, man, that's, mm-hmm. that's when I started seeing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I started like, oh, okay, this... This how you uh, make money through the you know when your songs and movies and stuff like that, and you start seeing chicks. Then we're like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. that's what that is. And you know, because before then I didn't have no uh, songs and no movies or nothing like that. But you know, right around that time, that's when I first started seeing. Okay, this you can really make money when you got a uh, song and a movie. And you know, I did like some writing for uh, uh, artists like Lil Jon them mm-hmm. that. You know, have, uh, they became hits. Mm-hmm. Like Snap Your Fingers, that was it became a hit. I had some writing to do in there. I was like, oh, this is hey, this is this, you get money off of this. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. When you have real hits, so yeah, right around that era, I would say, um, ten years I was doing it, uh, just making uh, show money and and featuring money. Mm-hmm. But by the time Hustle and Flow came, and when I started doing more songwriting, that's when I started seeing real money. How did they come about? How did they first reach out to you? Like, what was you doing? You was like, man, when Craig Brewer for his Hustle and Flow, uh, he was an independent filmmaker that used to take his. We all, as independent artists, um, music artists, we used to take a lot, a lot of our stuff to select or his distribution mm-hmm. to get our um, taste and CDs into the record stores and stuff. Craig Brewer was an independent filmmaker. He when he made his first uh, independent film, he took it to Select O2 to get his stuff out there. So I met him during that time, way before Hustle and Flow, and we uh, got cool. And uh, so by the time Hustle and Flow came about, uh, he basically vouched for me. You know what I'm saying? He was out doing. Uh, he got with John Singleton, and John Singleton wanted to um, do something with R. P. him. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. to John Singleton, man. Mm-hmm. Um, John Singleton pretty much was used to working with 36 Mafia because they did stuff with Baby Boy. And um, so Craig kind of, you know, vouched for me, like, man, I want you to check out what Al Capone could do. And um, they gave me a, told me what they were looking for. I talked to Terrence Howard on the phone. Yeah, I'm finna ask you, did you get a chance to meet Terrence Howard, Taraji? Oh, yeah, most definitely. But I talked to him before the film was out. Hold on, man, you know you get no mic on the mic. mic. (laughs) (laughs) You can't say nothing. All right, um, but, um, um, yeah, I talked to Terrence Howard on the phone and kind of get an idea of what the character was. So once I figured that out, I wrote the first song, It Ain't Over. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the Keep Hustling, Keep Flowing, I wrote that one. Yeah. And yeah, when they yeah, heard it, me. they loved it. You know what I'm saying? He came to the studio, they were like, man, yeah, this is it. And then, you know what I'm saying, at some point they were like, man, what else you got? And I just happened to have my CD. It was my CD. Mm. Whoop That Trick was my song, personal yeah. song. You the whoop that Yeah, it was my personal song. Um, and then I played it. I, I played a couple of songs off this CD. Whoop That Trick was one of them. Get Crunk, Get Bug was another one. All of them, like my, I was getting ready to uh, do my next mixtape. Mm-hmm. So I played those, and they heard, like, man, can you um, uh, uh, make this uh, uh, right it where the character is acting? I was like... I'm sitting there like, man, I just wanted to get a song. I can get a nothing in this song. Man, so man, I'm like, hell yeah, man, I, can, I can write a million songs, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So anyway, that's how that ended up coming about. Um, it, it was it was Whoop That Trick was my song, but they, they ended up hearing it because they liked to keep hustling and keep flowing. Mm-hmm. And they were like, man, well, we got we to gotta do something with that, man. So that's how all, it kind of came about. Uh, doing my the grace of God to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, so the grace your, of God. What's your relationship like with other Memphis artists today, like uh, Juicy J, uh, DJ Paul, um, White, Lil White? You man, know what what's your relationship like with them? I guys? got man, I got love and respect with, for all of them to this day. From then to this day, I can see them guys anywhere, and it's love. Mm-hmm. I don't feel. I, if somebody got beef with me, I don't know they got beef with me. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm, that's what I'm gonna say. For all I know, I I got love because I know I got love for everybody, and I try to show love to everybody. So if somebody has some beef with me, because I I don't, they, they I feel like we can sit and talk about it. like, man, what's the what happened? Yeah. And when did it happen? Yeah. Let me at least let me clear my name. Well, you know what I'm saying. So I, I I'm just I'll say all that to say I don't have no beef with nobody. Yeah. Ain't number love. You know what I'm saying. Number love and respect and. Man, you know what I'm saying? Congratulations to uh, who did it on certain levels and, 
You know what I'm saying? I always showing love to everybody. Man, I, I ain't got number love. You hear me? Mm-hmm. Number love. And I appreciate that. And they give me love back. So mm-hmm. yeah. it's all good. I'm going to ask you this. Why do you feel like certain people made it on, like, the mainstream and some yep. people stay, like, you know, local? I would say um, it's a certain level of, well, let's start right here. Everybody has the ta- has a certain level of talent that's, uh, I say, at least equal enough to each other, where it's like, even if it's different styles, the talent is there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can come up with dope music, whatever the case may be. The thing that takes it to the next level is you do have to have a, a, some type of an investor to help push it to the next level. Uh, uh, like you a can, label or... It, it don't just have to be a label. It somebody could be a label. Believe in you, right? Yeah, somebody mm-hmm. believe in you that that's actually got some money to help you, you know what I'm saying, to to um really get out there more. And I think that's the difference between um artists that was able to take it to a different level than artists that was not able to take it to uh that level but was just as talented as those artists that, that took it to another level. I feel like it was a certain level of uh financial backing. There's a certain level of dedication, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so work ethic, too. You work, think? Oh, yeah, d- dedication and work ethic. Those two things, those three. Money, dedication, work ethic. Uh, you got to have all three of those because mm-hmm. if you don't have the work ethic, of course, it's only going to go so far. You, and you, and you need the dedication to have the work ethic. Uh, but at the same time, on top of the talent, you know, you got to think about it. Some folks, it's some folks, you might hear certain songs and be like, how did that make it? Sometimes it's the right, it's a certain amount of money that's being pushed, you know what I'm saying, to help get it like this. How so, much would you say, how much money would you say can, like if I, if I was to make a song right now, how much money would you say you got to put behind a song to actually get it out there and probably that, that'd be the song that you make it off of? How much money would you say? I ain't gonna lie. I can't say, I can really can't say, but I do remember seeing a, a couple of interviews where some, I done heard, a hundred and fifty thousand thrown out there. Six figures, man. For one song. Yeah. I'm like, man, man, man. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. Sometimes it works and sometimes because that's the other thing. So it ain't just the money. Cause you can I done seen people that had, you know, um, um money behind them and they, they weren't ever able to take it to the next level because it was either in a conflict, you know what I'm saying, people conflicting with each other and it helped it. the whole situation crumbled or it was different factors, so uh, money alone can't do it, but if you got all the other elements working for you and you got your own style, your own vibe, and you got some money behind you, yeah, I think yeah. it can help take you to the next level. Yeah, man, it's dope. So, man, November 17th, 2021 was a sad day. You know, it actually made five months yesterday that, man, Young Dolph passed away. You know, how did you how did you, I'm pretty sure you met Young Dolph, you know. Man, a year before that, me and the Bach Hayes, me and the Bach... Hold on, hold on. Okay. I call him back. A year before that, me and the Barcades did a, uh, a party for Young Dolph. Uh, I sent you the footage. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I knew Dolph. Uh, we had each other's numbers. We'll, we'll actually text each other every once in a while. Just, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, if something going on, like, what's up? What's going on? How you doing? You know, uh, I like what you, you know, love seeing you shine, or whatever the case may be. So, we did actually have uh, communication with each other uh, just on, on a personal level. We didn't talk all the time, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we did have. We have. So it, my, it, it 100% hurt me deeply when I how saw that. How did it. you first find out about it? Like, what was you doing? Man, I'm going to tell you how I first found out about it. The news called me. For real? Asking me, do I know about John Dolph being, you know, just getting shot or whatever? I'm like, no. Uh, what y'all hear Cause I don't, I'm like, this can't be for real, man. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, damn, the news calling me, asking me this. I'm like, nah, I ain't heard nothing about that. What did what what did y'all hear? I'm asking them now that you asking me. What why are you calling me asking me still what's going on? They were like, yeah, we just heard that you got shot. So that's how I found out mm-hmm. through the news. They called asking me, and I'm like, man, nah, this can't be for real, man. Mm-hmm. And um, then maybe I said about a couple of hours later. I found funny. out it was for real. I was like, man, that shit, man, it killed me, man. Yeah, it killed me, man. I, 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 I talked to my guy, uh, DJ Squeaky, man. We DJ we, Squeaky produced a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of his stuff. Yeah, and that, that man, Squeaky, my, you know, what I'm saying we've been a one since day one. So, you know, he the guy I called, like, trying to find out if it's true. 
Man, we man, we we was just talking to each other in complete disbelief, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, shit. it hurt right now yeah, it thinking do, about man. it. It do, it do. It hurt right now thinking yeah, about know, it, man. And I'm gonna ask you this: Do you feel like when certain artists, like when Young Dolph, do make it, like well, he made it? You know, when he get to that point, like he he could kind of be it. Most of them, you most know, them. Do you feel like it's it's best to say stay out of your stay out of where you come from? Sometimes I would say. <sighs> Um, you got to be, you just got to be on your P's and Q's and be careful at all times um, when you're on a certain level. Because um, if, you know, coming from the streets, you know how people talk. You know what the conversation that goes on with folks that's trying to get, that see somebody that's doing well. You done been in them, com- around them folks having them conversations about what they'll do to somebody or whatever mm-hmm. the case. Mm-hmm. So if you end up being that person that's doing well, you got to know that that conversation is going on about you. Mm-hmm. So knowing that, you got to always be cautious. You know what I'm saying? You always got to be careful. I mean, you know, it's only so much, I guess, you can, you know, uh, it's only so careful you could be. Uh, but you got to definitely just watch it. Stay out stay out the way as much as you can. But when you, you know, it, you, it's still good to be come back and be seen so people know that, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying, you, you ain't forgot about where you came from, but yeah. be careful when you go in them environments. But most know. rappers, but like one thing I noticed, most rappers always get killed where they from, like Nipsey Hussle, man, Young Dolph, uh, a, a rapper named Young Greatness, Mo3 got killed. When he, a lot of rappers always get killed where they from. It, it never fails, every time. So what, how do you feel about that? It's, it's man. But sometimes it get deeper. You know, Nader did stuff, ain't nobody forgot. You know, sometimes it can get deeper, though. Yeah, that's true. Uh... Man, 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 it's, it's it's discouraging. I would say it's discouraging because it does send the message out that if you uh, uh, make it to a certain level, it sends a message that you shouldn't come back. Mm-hmm. And that's I think that's not a good message to be sending, but it's the reality because we're seeing what's going on. But it's still young kids that's you know, coming up in the game. They, they need to be able to, you know what I'm saying, see – Somebody from their hood or from where they from, and and, and they need see. that motivation. Yeah, it's that motivation. So, you know, the folks that's doing it to people from um, from their neighborhoods, they robbing everybody, man. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Out of when when they when they take their life and stuff like that, you you know what I'm saying? Not only you took that person's life, and, you know what I'm saying? Some from the hood hard. Man, you took yeah. something from the hood that. You know what I'm saying? That 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 the hood need. Mm-hmm. You know they probably saying? be like, I ain't gonna lie, probably be never ain't nobody gonna be like young Dolph again. It was only your one. Yeah, well, oh, no question, no question, man. Only one Dolph, man. Like I said, even talking about it, man. Mm-hmm. Whew. Yeah, it's, it's, man. It's, 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 it's it's hitting me right now, man. So Yeah. Man, it's 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 it hurt it hurts. Like it just really hurts, man. I I I feel like he meant well and was trying to do uh right, uh, you know, about the community and you know what I'm saying? It definitely shouldn't have, it, I don't feel like it should have went like that at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At all. Yeah, I agree, man. R.I.P. the Young Dolphin, man. But I want to talk about this. I heard you uh, You dropped a new song two weeks ago called Box Thin. Box Me In, Yeah, man. yeah, Box Me In. Yeah. <laughs> we was listening, I was listening, me and my sister, we was listening on our way here, bro. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a dope song. Man, man. thank you, I man. I like the instrumental. So how did that all come about, Box Me In? Why did you name it Box Me In? Well, Box Me In, man, um, it first came about, uh, I was, I've was i been working on uh, music that, I feel like Memphis um, never combined uh, the Memphis rap sound with the blues sound. Mm-hmm. So I was, that's what I had been doing, trying to do and you, more. Did you get that beat made? Like, every beat you get made, you probably get. No, no, that's original. Mm-hmm. I actually, that particular song, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I do this a lot on, mm-hmm. on song. I woke up in the middle of the night with that, 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 that groove in my head. So I pick up my recorder, like, mm, 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 I got through recording the, the whole groove. I went back to sleep. <laughs> and I woke up the next day, I'm like, man, I got to go in the studio and record this. Yeah. So I, um. Got with my homie KC, Kurt Clayton, mm-hmm. and um, 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 I, I uh, played the bass line for him on the phone. So we, we replayed it uh, live. Got uh, one of my guitar players that's going to come in at some point, uh, Chris Pitts. I had him play the guitar licks. I like, man, make sure I got them, them blues elements in there. He was hitting the blues licks and everything. Then I, I made the beat, you know, did the, the, the kicks and the kick in the drums. And, you know, once I got that groove, then I actually had a I had a different hook at first. It was more of a chant. 
It was more like, box me in, you can't box me in. Yeah. Box me in, you can't box me in. But then at some point, I was like, I like the hook, but I, I wanted to be felt a little more. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the lyrics, the, the verses to the song, and then after I did that, I, I listened to it some more with the whole, with the music and the verses and the chant hook. Mm -hmm. And it hit me like, man, I needed to be more heartfelt. So I start, I write a lot of singing parts, even though I don't know how to sing. I can sing enough to get, tell a singer how to sing it. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the, the different from the rest, never fit it in. Mm -hmm. I move, I want it. I'm like, man, this, this, is, this means more than just the chant. Now you feel your music, what you're saying? Like, oh, you man, no it? question. How, man, no how question. this, man, this, do you feel like this is a God given talent? Like you, so like when you write your music, you be like, I know how this gonna go. You feel it, like you know for a fact. Ain't no question. It, it, it ain't you no know, second guessing. And yes, it is a God given uh, thing because it was a time where I, tr I, I said, man, I'm not doing this no more because you know I, I, I went through some different things mm -hmm. that turned me off about the industry. I'm like, man, I ain't doing. I'm done with this. And um, but the ideas, like I said, when ideas come to you in your sleep. Mm -hmm. And I knew it then. I'm like, I, I guess I never stop doing this because it's gonna come to me. Mm -hmm. I can't control that, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, and then I just got into it more. I got back involved in it, and I just fell in love with it again. And I realized again that man, I can't stop something that's gonna come to me without me even trying to make it come to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, it's, it's God given, and I'm, I'm thankful. And I 100% feel every instrument, <laughs> every hi hat, every kick, every word. Every syllable, yeah. I feel it mm -hmm. to the bone. Yeah, and when you out in the and when you out in the streets of Memphis, like, do you get noticed a lot? Do you get stopped a lot? Of people be like, oh, that's I mean, I have people that do notice me, but then I have people that I don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. you know, and, I, and I actually, I don't have no you don't problem take with it that. Personally. You no, don't take sir, it personally. No, sir. No, yeah. sir. I don't, I don't have no problem. You know what I'm saying? Some, somebody could be like, somebody could be like, uh, man, that's Al Capone right there. Somebody else could be looking at like, who the who they who? I don't know. Who, I don't take no offense to it. Like, hey, uh, everybody ain't going to know you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, um, then I'm an OG. So people from my era would know who I am faster than Somebody the new generation. Artist, yeah. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. uh, the new generation have uh, uh, the artists and stuff that's popular to them. And like so, Shiesty, yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. And I listen to all them folks, too. Yeah. I'm like a fan. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a fan of rap. Like I said, I, I, was, I love hip-hop. That's what got me into hip hop because I love hip hop. So I'm a fan first. I just just know how to express the songs and the music, but I'm a fan of hip hop. So to this day, man, I'm listening to you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, Pooh Shice. I'm listening to Big Boogie. I'm listening to yeah. uh, 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 Big Scott, man. I'm listening to yeah. I'm listening to all man, man, to man. Them, man. I'm all of them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I can name Duke Dudes. I can name all man. I can, I listen to them, man. And it's great because you're an OG, man. You know, most OGs, they'll be like, man, they think they, 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 are, they are hate on the other young men. I glory. love it. Yeah. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, man, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a fan. Man. I listen to it. I, you know, and folks, some folks be like, man, the new music, it, it, it be flat, uh, straight up. It was whack music then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was artists that was whack then. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it, it don't change now. Some artists whack, some artists dope. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I I listen to what I think is you no know, dope, yeah. and and I hear, and I can hear it when I when I hear it. I hear it it's like okay. And then you got to understand that it's a at least I look at it from this point of view. It's a different era. It's a different style. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, y'all got y'all own style and era, and all you could do is try to tap into it. I like tapping into it, yeah. and once I tap into it, I'm like, man, I feel the vibe, I feel what it's going, and 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 from then I can I know what sound good and what don't sound good. Yeah, and I'm gonna ask you this, bro. Like, what was that? What was that time that you realized like the rap game changed? You know, because from 1990, I'm I'm still young, but you know, I love hip hop too. I'm always doing my research. I love hip hop from 1990. You know, then 2005, this and the charts started to change. 2010 rap was different than now. So how hard was it for you to adjust to that, all these different changes in the industry and the hip-hop? Man, it would seem like it would be real hard. But, again, I'm such a fan of it <laughs> yeah. that once I'm <laughs> listening to it, I just connect with it. Yeah. And once I connect with it, I can, I can do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't get stuck in a time, uh, in, in a certain time period, Cause I'm always wanting to know what's going on and what I try, I try to keep my ear to the street to mm -hmm. see what's happening and what's what's the sound or what's the flow, what's the vibe, 
and and once I tap into it and, and I connect with it, and I, I found the stuff that I do like. I ain't gonna say I like everything, but the stuff I do like, I log into that and be like, man, okay, I'm down. <laughs> So yeah. I'm a, I can all, I realize now I can always adapt to whatever era because I'm a, I, I, I done said it enough times. Yeah. I'm a fan, man. Yeah. And I'm a fan of whatever it is going on at that time period. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to find what sounds good to me. And once I connect with it, I connect with it. Yeah. Man, it's, it's dope, man. So to get ready to wrap things up, man, you know, we got a part two coming soon. I ain't going to give y'all two oh, boy. In the interview. Yeah, but I'm going to ask you this, man. Where can they find some of your music at your latest release? And tell them where they can find you at on social uh, media, too. I say the best place to do uh, to go to all of it, go to my website, akmemphis.com. Again, mm. akmemphis.com. I'll see it on the screen. Yeah, and once you go there, it, it's going to have my social media handles if you want to go to my social media. Uh, uh, and then on that website, you could, you could see a lot of different stuff that I got going on. You can get to... If you want to buy some of my Whoop That Trick shirts, yeah, yeah Whoop That Trick shirts and uh, all kinds of stuff, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Everything on that website uh, mm-hmm. get you everything you need to know and up to speed about me. If you ain't never heard of me before, man, hey, man, get to know you got Uncle Paul, Uncle Pizza. <laughs> oh, boy, one of the Memphis legends, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I rock with you. You rock with me. You hear me? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So y'all heard that, man, from my guy Al Capone, bro. Thanks for coming on Up Next TV, man. It's an Both honor up. having you, bro. Man, come on, man. Till the next one. Yes, sir. Oh, boy.